Velvet Leaf, which has a name which is totally unpronounceable, yes. so let's call it Velvet Leaf, has struck again. Yes, um, it's been discovered in uh, parts of the South Island. Uh, it's been discovered in uh, some crops of fodder beet, and, um, but specifically it's come in, in uh, uh, some lines of fodder beet that have been produced in Italy and then were exported back to Denmark and they've come to New Zealand via Denmark. So they are specific varieties um, and uh, I think the ones currently identified that uh, MPI have noted are uh, Kairos and Bangor. Um, look, it's, um, it is an issue. That the Velvet leaf has been in New Zealand for a long time. Um, it's not a new weed but um, it's on our um, prohibited uh, uh, importation list. And secondly, um, it's, it's a significantly damaging weed because in Europe it, um, it can grow up to a couple of metres tall and it's quite a smothering weed. So it's mm. the last thing we want in any of our crops or any of our uh, agricultural systems. So rightly, MPI are taking a pretty serious uh, view of it and... Um, the industry is obviously working with them, and um, we're we're working through making sure that we can eradicate it. It must be fairly obvious if it took, grows that tall, and it obviously grows quite quickly. Oh yes, it does. Um, yes, and a number of farms have discovered it in their crops, and have obviously alerted MPI, and it's been uh, they work through a process of um, removing it. Um, so, I think everyone's been pretty pretty vigilant, and there's been a good campaign to talk about it. Um, look. Look, the, the uh, lines of seed that they have found this weed in did pass biosecurity importation requirements. So there's clearly um, a bit of an issue there somewhere. Mm. And the seed was pelleted seed. So it came in in pelleted seed. So that's the coated seed, Rob. And um, make, it would make it very hard to identify. Well, then. you know, the, the seed prior to coating was obviously... Um, tested and it met importation requirements but somehow I don't know um, you only pick up one seed and very hard to pick up one seed in a million or whatever yeah, it might absolutely. be. Absolutely. But anyway so, you guys are onto it or the industry's um, well, onto the it. Well the industry's onto it. I mean we're obviously uh, well well aware of it. It's not impacting us directly but it, it is from the perspective that now MPI have put in place a a new set of importation requirements for pelleted seed. And at this point, it affects all pelleted seed coming into New Zealand. So that's flowers, that's uh, herbs, that's uh, hybrid mm. seed crops, <clears throat> that's fodder beet, it's whatever. So um, there's a much higher importation requirement now, and that has been worked through with industry and MPI in terms of bringing the crops in. So each line of seed will have to be basically, of pelleted seed will have to be um, inspected and will have to be uh, cleared for no weeds, etc. Mm. And then, it will, you know, there'll be a rigorous process. So that could impact things a little bit. Yep. Um, yeah. Now, the transition onto mm. fodder beet. Let's stick with fodder beet for a couple of minutes. All oh, right. Uh, well, look, this is the time. We're, we're approaching time. We're approaching feeding time, Rob. So we've grown the crop. We're at the point now where we're just about approaching feeding. So two or three key things just for farmers and people that are producing it themselves. First of all, do a yield assessment. Get a representative yield assessment of the crop so you know how many tonnes of dry matter you've got to deal with. That's the first thing. Second thing is transitioning your animals. It's a two to three week process. You need to introduce the crop to the animals very carefully and slowly um, and then as time builds up, just give them a little more and a little more and let them transition because, like anything, we're not a ruminant. But if we, if we were, uh, you start eating pineapple or a totally different food, your system will have to adjust. Yeah, I to, find that with that. Indian. Yes, well, maybe. <laughs> so um, the ruminant will have to adjust its, its whole microbial um, system within the rumen and it will basically adjust to the new feed so that when you do start feeding it maybe in early May full time there will be no there will be no problems and just remember a couple of things 
you will need a source of fiber with it yep. and depending on on the quality of the crop that you've got in terms of its leaf versus its bulb if you've got um, if, if you're in need of additional protein source then you'll have to add some some silage or something like that just to make sure that you've got that balance thank you very much indeed Warwick.